Welcome viewers, today on TV Box Top, I bring to you a new Windows 10 mini PC stick called the T6 Pro, featuring 6GB of LPDDR4 RAM, 128GB of internal storage, and running on a quad-core Intel Gemini Lake J4125 CPU. There is also a 4GB, 32GB model. This is one of the few mini PC sticks that I've seen to incorporate a thermal-controlled built-in cooling fan. So in this video, we'll take a look at its hardware performance on the Windows, then I'll attempt to install Fido OS and see if I can convert this mini PC stick into an Android TV stick. So stay tuned, that's up next. So I'm back, and in the box you have the T6 Pro mini PC stick itself. You get one HDMI female to male extension cable. You get a 12 volts 2 amps DC power adapter and a user manual. Now a quick look at its design and ports. Its body is made of plastic with a male HDMI connector to the top. At the opposite end, you have a gigabit Ethernet LAN port with some cooling vents. Along the side, you have two USB 3.0 ports, a power button, the DC power input jack and another cooling vent. On the opposite side, you have some more cooling vents. At the front, you have some more vents and through the mesh, you can see an LED power light. If you listen closely, you can hear the thermal control built-in cooling fan. And to the back, you just have a honeycomb mesh. So I'll now connect this to my 4K TV and capture card and continue. So I'm back, and when you start for the first time, you will have to complete the usual Windows Startup Wizard only once, then you are taken to the Windows Desktop. On its basic system information page, it shows that the processor has a base clock speed of 2.0 GHz, it has 6 GB of RAM, it's a 64-bit operating system and your Windows is activated. Under Advanced System and Hardware Information, it shows that you have a boost clock speed of 2.6 GHz. It's running on a Tri-Core UHD 600 GPU. The internal system disk is a SanDisk DA4128 and this is the remainder after the Windows installation. The Wi-Fi adapter is the Realtek 8821CU and it also shows that it has Bluetooth support. These specs resulted in a PCMark 10 benchmark of 1639. In the Geekbench 5 CPU benchmark, 451 single core and 1496 multi core. Its UHD 600 graphics GPU got a score of 15,161 in the iStorm Extreme, 3,224 in the CloudGate test, and 143 in the TimeSpy test. It has a RAM copy speed of 7,797 megabits per second, a read speed of 252 megabytes per second, and a write speed of 267 on its system disk. You have maximum bandwidth on the 5 GHz Wi-Fi band and on the LAN port and 36% achievable on the 2.4 GHz band. These benchmarks placed it at position number 3 among the mini PCs I've reviewed thus far. You can view this chart on my website using the link in the description below this video. For entertainment, you can install the Netflix and Amazon Prime Video apps from the Microsoft Store or you can view them in any browser. You can also manually install the Kodi Media Player via download or you can install the latest Matrix version from the Microsoft Store. You can watch YouTube in as high as 4K 2160p quality on any Chrome browser. And you can connect any gamepad controller wired or via Bluetooth and play some light Windows games. So 
So that's all for its Windows operating system. And as mentioned at the beginning of the video, I would now attempt to install FidoS. In the absence of internal expandable storage, I attempted to install FidoS on an external SSD via USB. The process was successful and it had to be done using a USB hub as there aren't enough USB ports to facilitate the installation flash drive, the external hard drive itself, and at the same time use a mouse and keyboard in the process. So connecting a USB hub to one of the USB ports on the stick made this process possible. I won't get into the process of installing FidoS as that was already covered in a previous video. A link to that can be found in the description below. When you install FidoS using a flash drive to install to another flash drive or external hard drive, you are faced with one limitation. And that is, FidoS will allow you to activate the Android subsystem, but it will not allow you to install open gaps to a USB device. It can only be done on a SATA internal hard drive or SSD. But this doesn't prevent you from installing apps as usual, because all this does is deprive you of the Google Play Store. So with the use of Aptoid or APK Pure, you can still install all your apps as usual and run them with full permissions. And as I've already covered in the FidoS tutorial, you can root the system if you so choose. In the FidoS tutorial video, you would have seen that the version was 11.4 and it was in beta version. When I installed FidoS on this occasion, I was prompted by the system that it has been updated to version 12.0 and to access the update, you have to now pay a one-time fee of $1.59. So I paid for the update and the system restarted and automatically installed version 12.0. So this is the new login screen of version 12.0 and it comes with a new wallpaper which you can change of course. In the settings area, you can now see that it says version 12.0. One of the major changes is that you can now set the display refresh rate to 60Hz, whereas in the previous version it was limited to 30Hz. I also notice that my Panda key mapping apps don't crash when I attempt to open them, but on this device where you don't have access to your Google Play services, the apps won't activate even with the Panda manual activator. So I'll leave that for another device that has expandable internal storage. This new operating system still does not have Dolby or DTS support and it still cannot play 4K HDR videos. 1080p videos play just fine. You do however have Vulkan support. So I'll now quickly browse through its benchmarks on FidoS. So with FidoS running on the T6 Pro, you have a CPU clock speed of 2.7 GHz which is its boost clock speed. You have Google Wide Vine Level 3 with no HDCP protection and as I said, you can root the system if you so choose. A major issue under FidoS and also under Android x86 is that you don't have Wi-Fi support. You only have internet connection via the LAN port, so take note of that if you intend to use FidoS or Android x86 on this device. Bluetooth on the other hand works perfectly and I was able to connect to my Bluetooth gamepad. So to close out this demonstration, I will just play some Android games to demonstrate its graphics rendering performance and to test for overheating. So after testing just one game, I discovered that gaming is merely impossible without your Google Play services that is required by most Android games. 
However, the graphics rendering is very good on the Fido S and the internal cooling fan kept temperatures well within range. So in summary, I like the performance of the T6 Pro on the Windows and on the Fido S. I like that it has an internal cooling fan to keep things cool under any activity and that its CPU and GPU has enough power to handle any major task. I would have liked to show the latest Android 11 x86, but after numerous attempts, I couldn't get any audio via HDMI. I did, however, get audio under the TOS Anthony Android TV OS x86 version. However, that version is limited to 1080p. And with that said, I've come to the end of my review. Thanks goes out to the SZ Box for sending this PC stick for today's review. And if you would like to get your hands on it at the lowest price online, it's available on their Amazon and AliExpress stores. See the links in the description below this video. Thanks for watching. Give this video the thumbs up if you enjoyed the presentation. If you are new to this channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell before leaving to be notified when I release new videos on mini PCs, Android x86 and the new Fido OS operating system. Stay tuned and I'll be seeing you in the next one.